Oh, hello there. Hello there. I'm Quad Laser, and I'm your number one resource for live streaming music onto Twitch TV. Last week, we went over how to capture Ableton Live and all of its audio using OBS and then streaming it out to Twitch. If you want to watch that video, click right here. This week, what we're going to go over is setting up an Ableton Live session that facilitates live improvisational music using loopers. Loopers are super cool. Anyone that tells you otherwise is trying to sell you something. Okay, Ableton Live. Like we said earlier, our goal is to set up some audio instruments, some MIDI instruments, and get them all running with loopers so that we can build cool improvisational sessions on the fly while we're live streaming on Twitch or any other platform. You should all be familiar with the way Ableton Live looks like when it opens up, so our goal here is to create a cool template that you can use over and over again for every single session, but that you'll never need to actually save once you're done at the end of the night. You'll be able to ditch everything and start fresh the next time you have a live music session. For me, I think the easiest thing to set up is audio instruments, so let's go ahead and just get a microphone track now that we can use to talk to our audience as well as loop and do fun vocal things with. So as you can see, Ableton Live already provides us an audio track, so we don't have to do anything yet. First thing we need to do is get it set up with a looper. The way some people do it is they just use the clips feature. So let's get the song rolling with the metronome turned on, arm the track. So we can't really hear ourselves monitored yet. If we want to monitor ourselves, we can press this auto button here. Okay, cool. Now we can hear ourselves in Ableton Live. That's why you're hearing two of me right now. And what they would do is they'd click this little record button, which is tempo locked to the downbeat. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm making some music. Hey, what's going on? Hey, I'm making some music. That's a cool way to do it and all, there are a few problems with this. Problem number one is that it's gonna be difficult to set up an external piece of hardware that's going to trigger the correct clip. And what I mean by that is you would need a different button on your piece of hardware to trigger this clip, or this clip, or this clip, or this clip. You get the point, you would need a lot of buttons. The other problem is there's then no way to quickly delete these clips if you want to get rid of them without actually coming back over to your computer. We want to minimize the amount of interaction we need to actually have with our computer to give the best possible live experience we can to the watchers. The second problem is you need to press a button to start recording and then a button to stop recording and start looping. Ableton Live has a great built-in audio effect called the looper that kind of eliminates all these problems for us and lets us do a little bit of pre-planning that gives a better experience to both the people watching and you as a performer. So let's go ahead and get the looper set up now. The way to do it is to make sure over here on the left you're in the audio effects category and then scroll down to looper here and drag it onto your audio track and let go. Now down here on this track you have a new looper effect. Let's go over it really quick. The first cool thing I want to show you about the looper is right here where it says record and then X number of bars. What's great about this is a drop down menu and you can select the number of bars or measures that you want to record for. A common number is four measures, maybe two measures, maybe eight measures. I'm going to set it to two measures for now just to give you an example of how this works. Let's record another little bit of audio that we're going to loop, kind of like we did with the clip before. Hey. Check it out, I'm making some music. Hey, check it out, I'm making some music. Hey, check it out, I'm making some music. Okay, so you're probably noticing right now, hey dude, that's exactly the same as the clips. So what's the point of using this at all? Well, let's check out feature number one. I'm gonna clear this out. And now if you notice, we have this then plus sign button. That's just the default setting, we didn't touch it. So let's check it out and see what it does, watch this. Check it out, I'm making some music. Hey, check it out, I'm making some music. Hey, check it out, I'm making some music. Hey, check it out, I'm making some music. So as you just saw, you can actually layer your voices together without having to start or stop or do any extra special things. That's a really powerful thing if you want to do harmonization or you just want to, I don't know, if you're doing something rhythmic and you want to add to the rhythm as you go along. If you've ever worked with hardware loopers, you're probably noticing now that, hey, this works more like a hardware looper than the clips feature does in Ableton Live. 
If when you're recording your first pass, you don't want it to start overdubbing, which is what we just saw where it's recording over what you had already just recorded, you can actually just click here on this plus sign and it turns into a little play button. And that way when it gets to the end of the initial two measures, it will just start playing it back and it will not put it into overdub mode. If you like what you're learning, be sure to subscribe to the channel because next week we're going to go over thinking about how to have a long-term and interesting improvisational session with loopers. You don't want your audience getting too bored. Now that we understand the basics of using the looper, the exact same principles apply to a MIDI track. So let's try it out really quick. On our MIDI track, we need to add an instrument. Ableton Live comes with some built-in instruments, or if you don't have them, you probably have some plugins. Anyway, use whatever your favorite MIDI instruments are for this step. I'll just pick a really simple electric piano. Now we do the same thing as we did for our audio track, which is to go to audio effects and grab the looper and throw it on the end. This will give us the exact same abilities that we had when we were looping on the audio track. Let's go ahead and set this to two bars and loop something really quick. So it's simple to see that doing this on a MIDI track is exactly the same as doing this on an audio track. Now that we have the fundamentals of how the looper object works in Ableton Live, let's go ahead and build a full live session that we can use as a template for our full live music performance. This little thing I've got here is called the Korg Nano Control and we're literally just going to use it for the buttons, though it's pretty cool for other stuff too if you want to check it out. The Nano Control for me is the bread and butter of my live music performance. I use it to start and stop my loopers as well as clear any tracks that I'm not currently using. You can really use any MIDI device that has buttons on it, or you can even use your computer's keyboard. Now let me show you how to do some MIDI mapping really quick. Our goal here is to set up a system that we can start and stop loopers and clear them when we need to. That's all we're going to need for our live performance. To get into MIDI mapping mode, there's a button up here in Ableton Live that says MIDI. When you click it, you kind of get this crazy looking blue thing. The way MIDI mapping works is you click on any of these controls that have a blue highlight over them, and then you click or move the MIDI thing that you want to attach to it. In this case, what we want is a button to start and stop recording or turn on overdub mode. And we want a button to clear our track. So to get the button to start and stop our looper, the first thing we'll do is click on the record button. Or for you, if there's a loop down on it right now, it might look like a play button or a plus button. It's just this giant button right here and then you press the MIDI button on your controller that you want to map to it. What you didn't see was I pressed a button down here on my core control and what happened is we get this number that shows up on the control element that we're assigning a button to and that doesn't mean so much. Don't worry about what those numbers mean. And then over here we see this CC23 path to whirly hard piano. It's a whole bunch of gibberish that you don't need to worry about. All you need to know is the button that you pressed on your MIDI controller is now mapped to this button. So let's go ahead and check to make sure that worked. If we click MIDI again, it will close out of this. And then I'm going to press the button on my nano controller right here. As you can see, it says recording in progress, meaning I did in fact start the looper. The next thing we want to do is add a MIDI button to the clear function. So to do that, we'll click on MIDI again. And then down here where it says clear, we'll click on that and then press one of our other MIDI buttons on our MIDI controller. And you can see it says 133 for mine. It might be a different number for you. Again, don't worry about the numbers. Let's make sure that worked. Okay, I'm going to press the clear button on my MIDI controller. And it cleared it out. If you don't have a MIDI device to do this with, you can do the exact same thing with your computer keyboard. And the way you want to do that is it's the same way as MIDI mapping, except you're going to press key instead of MIDI. Then you're going to press on the element you want and press a button. I picked Q. Now Q is mapped to this record button. Then we click on the clear button, press W. Now W is mapped to this clear button. Now when you're doing this, if you're pressing the keyboard buttons and you're hearing your synthesizer, press this button right here it looks like a little keyboard and it'll turn off your computer keyboard acting as a midi keyboard okay now that we know how to midi map let's build the entire session that i use for my live set i'm going to delete everything and just kind of start from scratch here the way i've thought about setting up my live session is that here on my nano control i have nine strips running across like this 
and each one has a set of two buttons. So what I've decided is that the top button is to start a track and the bottom button is to delete and reset a track. Since I have nine tracks to work with, I've decided to go with six MIDI instruments that I play with my piano, and then three audio instruments, one being the voice, and then a guitar track, and then a bass track. So real quick, I'm gonna set up six MIDI tracks and three audio tracks. If you don't know the shortcuts, the shortcut to create a MIDI track is Control shift t and the shortcut to create an uh, audio track is Control t Oh hey, welcome to the piano. The MIDI instruments that I like to add to my session are two Rhodes tracks, two piano tracks, and two drum machines. If you have the built-in Ableton Live instruments, the Rhodes tracks can be found here. Make sure you're in the Instruments tab, open the Electric category, open Pianos and Keys, and then go down here to where it says Old School Rhodes. Drag that onto your first MIDI track. The Rhodes are a classic instrument with a warm tone and blend really well with a lot of other instruments going on at the same time. I personally like to have two of these tracks so that I can do slightly different things with each one of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag another old school Rhodes onto MIDI track number two. The next instrument needs no introduction. It's a piano. Piano can be found under instrument rack, piano and keys, and then there's a whole bunch of these grand pianos down here. I like to just use this basic grand piano one. For the same reasons as the Rhodes, I like to have two grand pianos. So I just go ahead and drop another grand piano on track four. Track five and six I reserve for drum machines. I like to have one drum machine as a sort of percussion sound bank and the other one as a sort of all around general use drum kit. You can find some built-in Ableton Live drum kits by closing Instrument Rack, opening Impulse, and here are some drum kits. I like to use Percussion 1 for my percussion instruments. And then I like to pick from these other ones depending on the kind of sound I'm going for. Today I'm just going to use Vintage Funky Good Time. The last three tracks here are reserved for my guitar, my bass, and my vocal track. For time reasons, we're not going to go over setting up the guitar, bass, and vocal track, but just remember it's the same way as setting up the MIDI tracks. Now all we need to do is add a looper to each one of these tracks. Remember the looper can be found under Audio Effects, Looper. Now what we're going to do is we're going to map the looper buttons to a MIDI device like we went over earlier. Remember I have this micro nano control? The way I'm going to do it is I have nine tracks. I'm going to map start looper to the top button and reset looper to the bottom button across all nine tracks going across this thing. Now that I've got the looper buttons mapped, I can sort of play around with it and do whatever I want in an improvisational style.
Cool. With just a little bit of setup, we can actually get a really interesting live show going. If you want to see this exact setup put into action live on Twitch.tv, I stream every Thursday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The link is in the description below. I try to keep it interesting as well as somewhat humorous, so come on and check it out. Hopefully you're not sitting there pulling out your hair going, wait a second, he used another piece of hardware that I don't have. The piece of gear I'm using is called the APC40, which was the Ableton pad controller. It's been replaced with newer pieces of hardware, but I still think it's pretty cool. All I'm really using it for is to select different instruments and to sometimes mix my volumes when I need to on the fly. That is an important note though, to be able to play these different instruments while you're live performing, you're going to need a way to arm different tracks. You don't want to have to come to your computer and click on each different track when you want to play it. The best budget option for this is to use your computer's keyboard using the keyboard mapping just like we did earlier. To do that, press the key button up here and then click on the record button that you want to set and press a key. What I'm going to use is the bottom row of the keyboard to arm different tracks. So click on the arm button, press Z, next track, X, next track, C, V, B, N, M, comma, period close out the key, and then make sure you have the computer keyboard as a MIDI keyboard button deselected. Now I need to do is press Z to arm my first row tracks, B to arm my second track, C for my third track, and so on and so forth. To recap what we learned, we set up an Ableton Live session that facilitates live improvisational music. We use a series of different tracks, each one of them that has its own looper on it, and then the loopers have MIDI buttons that we can press to turn on and off the looper as well as clear the loopers out. With this really simple setup, we can have super powerful sessions that can go on for many hours. <laughs> Yeah.